What is good, YouTube fam? Hope you all are doing well. My name is Tyler, and today I'm gonna be coding my BMW F30. It's a 2018 340i, and I'm gonna be using firmware code with an OBD adapter. For such a cheap price, you can customize the coding in your BMW, and it's really easy to do. Like, you don't need any computer coding experience. All you need is the app and the adapter, and you can code your BMW. So in this video, we'll just be going over everything that I'm coding in my car. And these are things that you know that probably bother you as they bother me and you can go ahead and code them out or change them and it's a complete game changer in my opinion. You get a lot of value for purchasing a Bimmer code and the OBD adapter. Plus, you know, you can use the OBD adapter down the line too. Uh, I also use Bimmerlink. I think that's affiliated with Bimmer code. But yeah, I bought both of them together and Bimmerlink pretty much is like a diagnostic tool. So it can show you all the readings like your oil temperature and a bunch of other things. You can control your exhaust flap or your exhaust valve. So that's really cool and it's a cool feature. So if you've been following the channel for a little bit, you know I made a previous video on this in the past when I first bought this F30. But I wanted to go ahead and make an updated video, code in some things that I didn't do before. And also when we coded in CarPlay into my F30, we lost some of the coding because we had to reset some of the electronic modules. So we need to go back and do that. And I figured I'd add in a few more and make an updated video for you guys. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's bust open our OBD adapter and get to coding the car. All right, so before we get to coding, I'm gonna go ahead and just hook up my car to this Stanley battery charger. And I highly recommend that you grab one of these. This is like the best and the cheapest battery charger that I could find. And it has a 25 amp recurring charge. So that's what you need to charge your BMW. And I highly recommend just having this just around in the garage in general, any car you have, because you never know when you need to jump a friend's car. And that way you don't have to use your car, use your battery. So this is really handy. Also, when you go to tune your car for the first time, those flashes can take a while. And it's best to have a battery charger. And especially when we're about to code in a second, because coding can take a long time. You know, it depends like how long you want to sit in the app, especially if it's your first time. You want to take your time browsing through it and make sure you get everything that you want to code. And I find that having a battery charger just gives you that peace of mind. So I'll leave a link to this product in the description below for your convenience. And I'll also leave a link to the OBD Bluetooth connector and Bimmer code too. Now we're in the car, we have the OBD Bluetooth connector hooked up, the light is on, it's pushed in all the way. Make sure you do that. Hit your uh, start stop button one time. Make sure it's in accessory mode. Turn off your AC. Go ahead and plug the seatbelt in just so the car doesn't fall asleep while we're doing all this. And then now we can go ahead and connect on Bimmer code, use Bluetooth. All right, so also if you use Bimmer code in the past, you can go to your settings and you can see I have Bimmer code full version. Uh, sometimes you need to restore your purchase on iTunes. So you can do that in here in settings, which I already did for this video. And then your adapter, you definitely want to select your adapter. And before all this, it'll also prompt you to select which car you have. So you'll do that first after you sign in to your account. Uh, adapter, we have that set. That's good there. Done. And I'm going to connect. All right, so BMW 3 Series. We'll also put our lights to the middle position. So we just need to go through, identify all the control units. This kind of takes a little bit of time as there are a lot of control units in BMWs, unfortunately. <laughs> all right, we are in. Now we have a list of all of the control units, uh, active sound design. I like to, I'll leave that alone. I mean, it's, I don't even really notice it when I'm in the cabin. So we'll just leave that off. We'll go to advanced crash safety module. And depending on the extent of how much is in each module is it's going to correlate to how much time it takes to load so this can be quite the waiting game and that is why the benefit of having a battery charger comes into play and it's super clutch for that reason this is not really something that you'd be playing with on the go so it's pretty much like code and done and then if you find out a new feature that you want to code in later you can do that and then another tip is to put your phone in airplane mode just so you don't get any calls or anything that's gonna disrupt the coding process. The reason why I wanted to go into here is for the seat belt reminder. So, all right, we already have these not active, but this is one thing that I wanted to do. 
and that didn't change when I did the CarPlay update, so that's all good there. Uh, initial seatbelt reminder after start. We'll leave that. I like the little beep. <laughs> little ding. <laughs> Alright, we'll get out of there. Air conditioning. Don't need to mess with that. Electronic transmission control. So you can go into there. I'm not going to go into it now, but say if your car doesn't have the sport transmission setting where you hit your shifter over to the left and it's automatic car, of course, then you can enable that and have that feature now. So front electronic module. That is the main one that was cleared when we got CarPlay programmed in. So this is gonna take a little while to load. And once it loads, I'll get right back with you and we'll go through this one. So ambient lighting brightness, you can mess with that. Decoupling from instrument cluster. So what that would do is like if you're adjusting the brightness on your instrument cluster, it would correlate to the ambient brightness of your radio trim or your door trim. So you can mess with that. I don't really care to mess with that. Um, Angelize brightness. So I don't wanna like up the brightness of my Angelize. You know, they're, they're bright enough from the factory. And when you're increasing the brightness, you're also increasing the running heat of them. So I don't know, you're probably gonna wear them out faster and they are not cheap to upgrade or replace. So shut off iDrive system when driver door is open. This is one that I love to have on. Um, so that right when you open the door, your iDrive system shuts off and stops utilizing your battery as much. Um, I, don't, I like that feature and also like when you open the door, it kind of like shuts off your music. So I prefer that. But of course, you know, when you turn off your car, you can hit the start stop button again and that will, without your foot on the brake, <laughs> and that will turn off your iDrive system. But I like to have this active because you know, it's just automatic. Auto start stop function off by default. So when you have this active, then every time you start up your car, the Auto start, stop, 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 fit, fit. <laughs> oh my god, the stop start function will be off. So I prefer that, you know, I hate it when I come to the light and my car shuts off to save like how much gas. <laughs> so we'll just keep that active. You know, I drive a sports car more so uh, compared to like a family sedan where I'm trying to save on gas via that method. <laughs> so auto stop, start, stop function memory. So you'll save the last function uh, for the next time you set off the car. So I guess the previous function, you don't really have to have active. Like if you already have the start stop uh, function off because uh, you press the button, then and you have this active, it'll stay off next time you start your car. And then eco mode. So I want to disable it in eco mode. Just so if I put it in eco mode while I'm on the highway or whatever, and I come to a stop, the car doesn't shut off automatically. And I don't have to press that button. So we are good there. Battery type. So you can code that in, I guess, if you have a different type of battery, but I'm running OEM batteries and I highly recommend you do the same. Let's see if I don't have any issues there. Brake force display type and activation speed. So this is for like, uh, if you're doing a heavy amount of braking or you're coming to a quick stop, then your brake lights will actually flash or like flicker. Uh, I don't really prefer that, you know, that's fine. I can do without that. So convenient opening has all these different settings for your comfort access system. I don't want to mess with any of that really. Actually, convenient closing with remote control. So actually I do want to make that active so that say I'll have all the windows down and I can... No! All right, so as you saw, we just came across a connection error. Uh, I went ahead and uh, forgot my BMW device on Bluetooth. So I have a feeling that that was like interrupting and CarPlay was like taking over and connecting. So went ahead and just turned that off. Back to it, horn uh, signal when locking the car when engine running. So I'm gonna make that not active. Uh, sometimes, you know, when I'm like running back into the house or something and I wanna lock the car while the car is still running, I'll go ahead and do that, but I don't want to hear a super loud horn. If you've never hear it, try it. <laughs> it's pretty loud. Window lifter interruption when opening a door. So I'm just going to leave that still active. Um, maybe there's a reason for it being active, but uh, we'll, we'll leave that like that. Time until automatic lock, two minutes. That's cool. Headlight washers, not active. I don't have them. LED conversions. So... This, this is good if you want to convert any of your 
lights, say your fog lights or your brake lights in the back to LED, uh, you can go ahead and code that in via the front electronic module. Cornering lights, so I'm not gonna mess with that. Uh, when I did have fog lights in, I actually made those not active because I didn't like taking photos and having the fog lights uh, being on because, you know, it would look bad in the photo because I want those angel eyes to be the predominant source <laughs> of light. All right, so fold mirrors. I like to keep my mirrors um, not active. You know, if I do want to fold my mirrors in in a tight sparking, parking spot, then I'll go ahead and do that uh, manually via the button. But, um, you know, I'll leave that. You can adjust your mirror tilt. So when you're reversing, you can adjust how far it's gonna tilt. So I don't really need to mess with that. Have an issue with that right now. Steering wheel with paddles. So if you don't have a steering wheel with paddles and you go to retrofit that in, you'll have to code it in and you can do that in Bimmer code. You can adjust the temperature or seat heating. I don't have heated seats. I'm in Florida, don't really need them. <laughs> um, boot lid opening delay. So that would be like your trunk, like when you're opening, you press the button, it kind of waits 0.5 seconds. So I'll just leave that. Do, do, do. Side markers. So side markers, I'm not sure if that's the um, amber lights that are in the headlights. I'm not sure, but I'm not gonna mess with those either. Welcome lights, don't need to mess with that. Uh, window cleaning, wipe cycle after front washing. That's pretty cool. Um, so it just goes three times. All right, I think I'm good here. Don't need to hop in any extra mode. I don't recommend you do either, unless you're trying to code something very specific. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit code. Start coding. Make sure you read that warning label. <laughs> if it's your first time doing this. I'll just recommend like you put your phone in airplane mode, um, hook it up to a battery charger, etc. Restarting ECU. You'll get a couple like uh, error messages. That is normal. Coding successful. Cool. All right, now let's go back into front light. We don't need any of that. Head unit. We'll go into head unit real quick. So I know right off the top, you can code in like um, active video. So like when you're driving, you can have like a music video or something playing. I don't need any of that. I mean, if you're going on a long road trip, maybe. So you can have like a movie playing and have your partner or co-pilot watch a movie. <laughs> All right, so now we're in the head unit options. And as you guys see, I have the MBT Evo. So you can change your warning chime, change it to Rolls Royce, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it BMW. Uh, CarPlay full screen mode, active, heck yeah. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen my CarPlay video, go ahead and check that out. I did not think it was possible, but shout out to Remote Bimmer, he made it possible. And then, so start screen animation. This is cool. I'll get an animation instead of a welcome screen. Start animation. And so unfortunately, while I was filming this, my camera overheated and I didn't realize it. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to narrate over back in the office where it's much cooler in here. All right, so back in the head unit, we'll go ahead and assign a start animation to M variant two, and I'll show you all what that looks like. You know, it's just like the M flying across the screen. And then tire pressure control. So that's one of the main things I wanted to code in today and to include temperature as well as pressure. And if you don't even have that, it's not active, then you can activate that as well. So that's a pretty cool feature. And then rear camera zoom. I don't really feel like I have a need for that. Um, and these other ones as well. Sport driving mode configurable. So that's two of two. So that's what you'll need to uh, activate if your car doesn't have sport plus mode, which I think most of them should. It'd probably be a pretty rare instance where it doesn't. And then warning at startup, we do not want that screen to pop up anymore. <laughs> so it's just annoying, it's just like a warning that pops up every time you start the car. And I just don't want that to pop up anymore, so we can code that to not come up. Okay, so we're good here, I'm gonna go ahead and start coding the head unit. Alright, now I want to get into instrument cluster. Uh, I know there's not many options there, but there's one thing I'm gonna change. So digital speed and board computer. So that's where you can 
have your actual miles per hour, kilometers per hour show in your instrument cluster, you know, where the date and time is. Then there's your start logo. We want that to be M performance, <laughs> of course. Low fuel warning, we can leave that as is. I never even get there anyways. Team full tank. <laughs> All right, now we'll go ahead and code this one. Now we'll get into integrated chassis management. All right, so I do have blind spot detection in my car, so I'm gonna change that from 50 kilometers an hour to 30 kilometers per hour. So then it'll activate and be active around 18 miles per hour. And then we'll go ahead and code this in. And then I wanna go into seat module driver. So if you have easy entry seat movement, so say you're a bigger person and the seat will automatically like move back when you're getting out of the car and then move in when you get in the car. So that's pretty much everything I'm gonna to code today. You can go into the vehicle icon, you can click that and it'll show you everything about your vehicle based on your VIN number and it'll tell you your series, um, your paint code, upholstery code, a bunch of other things, all the equipment and packages that your car came with. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. I hope this was helpful for you and coding your BMW. If you have any questions or any other um, coding features that you want to mention, go ahead and comment down below. Also, some of the features that you code in might not activate right away. It might take, you know, a couple key cycles with the car or maybe going out for a drive. You know, just, just keep that in mind. So if you don't mind, go ahead, smash that like button, hit subscribe, stay tuned for future content, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Thank you for watching.